Hey guys, this is Courtney, and today I wanted to give an announcement that I am going to be rebranding my channel name and my whole brand, website, all of that to Cosmic Clarity Astrology. So make sure that you guys go ahead and write that down, save that information in case you ever do search for my channel and can't find it no longer um, under this name. So today's video, we're going to be talking about the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, and that's happening on April 20th in the sign of Taurus at 21 degrees. This is a rare transit that happens around roughly every 14 years, and it is one of the most significant events that's happening in 2024 that astrologers are looking forward to. This is really exciting because both Jupiter and Uranus can have positive energies. Jupiter especially, Uranus is a little bit of a wild card. So when they come together, these slow planets that really do affect kind of the way our society functions, when they finally come together and unite, they almost have a little rendezvous and give us the potential to have some kind of breakthrough or timeline jump essentially in this lifetime. So I see this almost as like a quantum leap, a breakthrough, a time of hope and prosperity and progress and uh, reinvention or simply invention um, into something new. And so this is a really, again, really exciting time. We're going to go over what this is going to look like for all of the rising signs. What I'm getting or what I'm going to be predicting for you guys is what you're going to be blessed with or what the breakthrough is going to be for you happening in April. It's very likely that we're already starting to kind of feel some of these energies shifting and the storylines lining up so that throughout the month of April, this energy becomes more obvious, more potent. And you might see something significant happen in the month of April, especially if you have any angles most likely the angular houses. So like the first, fourth, seventh, and 10th house cusps around 21 degrees. Or if you have um, especially Taurus 21 degrees, which is where this is happening, or the fixed signs, which is Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, you're going to feel this really significantly. And then you'll also still feel it uh, if you have that also Um, planets also around 21 degrees of earth or water signs. So those are who it's going to be really impacting the most. If it's not hitting anything in your chart at all, then maybe you won't really get a huge jolt or a huge breakthrough. Maybe you're doing just fine or maybe it's just not your time for that. And then others are going to notice a really significant shift. But as a society, as a whole, we can start to see things, um, progress, but it's usually something that we can most clearly see retroactively. So once we've kind of passed this point in time, years later, we can look back and see, oh, that is a turning point for us. That was marking this time in history, or there was some sort of advancement that was heralding a new chapter into our lives as a collective or even in our personal lives. So it's a really, really exciting time. Jupiter is the great benefic. It's the bringer of blessings and children and abundance, and it's a very uh, social planet as well. So it has, uh, sorry, I just saw my cat walk outside. Um, so it has a lot of potential to bring in new relationships and connections and opportunities. And then Uranus is a planet of innovation, of progress, a little bit of rebellion as well, um, change, surprise, technology. And both of them tend to bring a lot of clarity, a lot of wisdom and the potential for great healing. So I'm excited to see how this can impact us on a more personal scale. But before we do that or talk about each sign, we're going to jump into first discussing what this has looked like in the past um, and then maybe get like a really quick overview of what this could look like for the collective. So the last time Jupiter and Uranus came together was in January uh, 2001, really early in January. So it's really something that you would have felt in December and the first week of January. So they, these plants came together in the sign of Pisces. And during this period of time, we had SpaceX become the first privately owned company to 
launch, orbit, and recover a spacecraft. So this is extremely Uranian, and obviously Jupiter is also about things progressing and moving forward, more so from a place of personal growth, societal growth, um, you know, internal expansion as well as spiritual expansion. But, um, and also Jupiter has a very strong link with things that are foreign. Um, so bringing various elements together and Uranus also has this type of quality where we are kind of bridging different types of maybe technologies or um, fields and kind of melding them together and creating something new and unique. And so we can see a lot of unique advancements through the coming together of these two planets. So we could see here that obviously this had a lot to deal with things um, progressing in terms of leaving this world, which I love that because it feels very kind of Aquarian and Pisces in nature that there's a a technological advancement that quite literally has us leave Earth, which I think is super cool. Also, during this this Jupiter Uranus conjunction in 2011, we had um, Obama repeal a policy that banned people who are gay from openly saying they were gay or joining the military under that pretense or something of that nature. So. Um, I'm probably not wording that correctly, but I think you guys know what I'm saying. So obviously this is very much a Piscean theme and also Aquarius. We can really see the blend of the two because Uranus is there, but, um, we can really see how people who were previously considered underdogs are getting some kind of breakthrough. And that's common with Jupiter and Uranus. We can see reversals of roles and fortunes. So people, um, especially who you were winning and who had the upper hand but who were not good or was outdated or was wrong we can see those things start to have a little bit of a shift happen with the jupiter uranus conjunction and i think that's really even more emphasized because pluto being in the sign of aquarius the sign of the people we are really in an age or an era where the emphasis is on the collective and the individual, the layperson, and not the governmental forces. And so it's a time of empowering each person and fighting for our own unique rights. And so we can start to see how maybe some power can shift into the hands of the people, um, especially healers, because Jupiter and Uranus together are both very spiritual planets. And so um, not only are we more adept at healing things that we might be stuck in in terms of cyclical patterns and things that have been just feeling like we cannot get out of them, Uranus and Jupiter together can really, again, jump this timeline. It can get us out of some cycle of suffering. It can help us see things from a higher perspective, give us solutions to existing problems. It can give us this higher level awareness that our human brain doesn't have access to on an ordinary level or on an ordinary day. So it's really an opportunity for us to open up to um, extra senses. We might feel quite literally more sensitive during this time and the information that comes to us should really be noted because it is significant for the path forward. Um, the previous time that Jupiter and Uranus came together in the same sign as uh, Taurus was in May of 1941 and during this period of time was kind of in the middle of World War II. Nazi Germany was at its height. There was a lot going on in terms of violence and oppression. And during this period of time, May in particular, uh, the British, I don't know what you'd call them, government, um, elected Winston Churchill. And he became the person who a few years later finally led to the demise of the war and of the Axis powers and Nazi Germany in 1945. So basically, the person who helped reverse the roles of power at that period of time, who helped end the war um, that was obviously horrible, um, and, and I think you can again see here how like the good wins. So it's like the evil was winning at that time, but when Winston was elected when things basically set into motion for there to be a reversal of power uh, was the same time Jupiter and Uranus came together. So I think that's very fascinating um, how these 
things happen. And so I think that also really goes to show that whatever happens this month is not necessarily going to be an immediate resolution of something. We can feel like we have a breakthrough. We can have this really important piece click into place. But again, we often won't see how that is so significant until we look back on this period of time retroactively and we can see, okay, yeah, that was the moment in time where I made this different choice or I had this new perspective that once I followed that path led me to a completely different reality, that timeline jump, that reversal of roles, that reversal of fortune and enhanced my life to a really significant degree or made a really noticeable difference in my life where a chapter was almost turned, but in a positive way, a resolution of something in a positive way. So it's really important right now not to put too much pressure on this period of time of seeing these amazing blessings and results because those could take time to unfold, but those really important characters or pieces of the puzzle will click in together during this period of time when the Jupiter and Uranus come together in our chart. One other thing I think is important to note is that sometimes we also can't fully understand how how significant this is for ourselves, but even more so from other people looking at our own lives. So we might, um, like, let me give you an example. So also when Jupiter and Uranus came together in Taurus, during this period of time in May 1941, the world's first programmable automatic computer was invented, which obviously sets the stage for this huge technological boom that we have had later, even more so now with Pluto and Aquarius. I think that's something that we can really get a sense of in this period of time in April. There's probably going to be some technological advancements, maybe with AR, AI or something else, where that sets the precedent for something much much bigger later down the line, but there's going to be people who don't get it when it first comes out. Like when that computer first arrived, maybe there are people who didn't understand the purpose. This was 1941. This is a long time ago. So I don't know what level of technology people were aware of at that time or um, what they thought it would be used for if they even knew it existed. So there's a lot that I feel like could be shifting for us, even as a collective, but in our personal lives as well, where things that we have this guided intuition to do or to follow, it's so outside of the box, it's so progressive, it's so ahead of its time that it's more likely to not be well received or to be misunderstood or even just kind of downplayed before it reaches its full pinnacle of success and then people years from now will see how significant that thing really was. And I think that we can see that also with the example of Winston Churchill, you know, he was elected during that period of time or he was, you know, moved into office or voted for at that period of time when that conjunction took place. But I don't know if anyone really knew that he was going to be kind of that big turning point um, in the war, for example, or that really significant player in the ending of a massive cycle of, of despair and destruction. So we can see how these things set into place now, but aren't always fully understood. So just really keep that in mind. So during these um, Jupiter-Uranus conjunctions, we can typically expect to have some kind of idea come through for us that we can bring to fruition. And that means that, again, the idea doesn't mean that the whole thing is completed. The results are not always here right away, although sometimes they will be. Um, If you've been having an existing problem, you can come up with really powerful solutions to that problem. And you can have, again, some kind of turning point, especially in concerns with Taurus themed topics. So we're going to talk about that for each sign because it's going to depend on what house you have Taurus in, the kind of problems or breakthrough or gift or blessing you could have as a result of these downloads or changes that you make in your life. But also, just talking about Taurus themes in general, this is very much related to the material world. This is related to our financial security, the kind of food that we eat, the cattle that we have on this earth, the um, nature itself, our clothes, our sense of security, our sense of stability, um, our sense of independence as well, being able to truly be autonomous in every sense of the word, our sense of worth and value and and the feeling of what we bring to the table, and um, our own kind of inner resolution to 
be consistent or work hard or see things through and have positive results with things. So all of those are very Taurus topics. And so we can see that these this Jupiter Uranus conjunction can have some kind of breakthrough or shift concerning the material world or concerning those things that I just mentioned. One of the things that I think is really important with something like this is that um, we need to be aware of how impulsive an energy like this can be. So there are lots of benefits to this. This is a time of blessings, of breakthrough, of radical shifts that can really enhance our lives. But also sometimes what happens with the exuberance of Jupiter and the uh, progressive rebellious nature of Uranus, when they come together, they can sometimes not really see how they have maybe blind faith and optimism in the value of change and revolution because that can be helpful yes of course but also there can be an element of throwing everything out the baby out with the bathwater. when there are things that are actually functioning and maybe just need revision when there's wisdom from the past that we need to carry forward but instead they're just rooting for what is new and progressive so we really need to keep our heads kind of balanced and look at things through an unbiased perspective while still having faith and optimism. So can we look at the facts? Can we look at the data while still believing that there is a higher possibility and potential, but not getting so blinded by our faith that we refuse to acknowledge, you know, real issues or refuse to look at the entire equation and be truthful and honest with ourselves and others? Another aspect of this is that we can sometimes get a little bit overzealous and overcommit ourselves. We can scatter ourselves. We can um, not really have a necessary focus on this energy, which is interesting because it is in Taurus, which is a fixed earth sign, which tends to be very focused, um, very kind of committed to a particular vision or, or habit or way of being, so much so that they can almost have trouble, you know, being too stagnant or not stagnant necessarily, but like unwilling to change when it's required, unwilling to adapt. So this energy helps shake that up. It helps us adapt. Um, but also, I think that this balance could be helpful because it could help maybe kind of focus these two planets. But that is a little bit of a risk where we might kind of scatter again, scatter our focus, energy, attention, our money, our resources. And we could come to later regret that. Um, so just being aware that change comes at a cost. Saying yes to something means saying no to something. Um, looking at the entire picture of things and being willing to listen to yourself with logic. So I think that's super, super important. Um, I think this also has a very creative and imaginative energy, which is something I really love because it helps us tap into our higher mind, our higher consciousness, our higher self, so that we can reinvent or reset or renew something in our life. So this could look like revamping something old or starting something new, but that still reinvigorates us. So there's this energy of something coming back to life, especially in the house that this conjunction is happening in for you. So I think that's all I want to say um, about the general energy of this conjunction. Let's go ahead and jump into what this is going to look like for all the rising signs. And if you enjoy this, don't forget to comment and like this video, share with your friends so that we can get my channel out there. And I appreciate you guys so much. All right, um, next we have Cancer. So this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction for you guys is happening in your 11th house. And I'm super excited because for my Cancers, I know you guys have probably been just feeling lately like you're really wanting to call in your community, your tribe, whatever politically correct thing you want to say for those people who really vibe with you and the way that you are as a person. Um, and so I see that's something that you guys are calling in with this Jupiter Uranus conjunction here. And I feel like you guys are also going to have some major healing around the past because I feel like that's almost the thing that's truly been preventing you from having this breakthrough in terms of your relationships. There could have been some relationships from your past that maybe have hurt you like in your family growing up or there could have been some kind of patterns or cycles you've been um, noticing run within your family that you don't want to perpetuate. You might have noticed that you have some um, just issues with friends that you're like, why is this always happening? Or who like, why am I attracting these kinds of people over and over again? And I really see that you guys are, yeah, oh my God, that's so crazy. 
I really see you guys healing from the past and I pulled this the past card. I also got the six of cups, um, which is a card around past and our childhood and our memory. So this is coming out so, so strongly that you guys are going to be able to finally manifest a sense of belonging and connection with the right people because you are letting go of some kind of cycle or pain or something from your past that has maybe haunted you in some kind of way even subconsciously with this high priestess card I really feel like it's something that has been maybe outside of your awareness for a lot of a lot of time and there's something about this Jupiter Uranus conjunction that can give you the clarity of the truth of what truly happened in your past or uh, what has been not even just what happened but also like how things affected you or what the full story is about your life and how all these patterns relationships and all these things have kind of connected together to equal what it is today and to equal maybe the lack or the lack of relationships or the dysfunction in relationships or um, whatever it is around your connection that you feel like has been missing with the temperance card I see you guys almost like it feels like there's a slowing down energy where before you maybe it's like you're it's almost like you're really learning how to pour into your own cup and this might be something that some of you guys have gotten that are a lot better at cancers usually tend to be pretty good at this but there's almost like this feeling of maybe for others you are more willing to extend yourself for others um this feeling of maybe there wasn't always this nice balance in your relationships or in your life where you maybe over committed or overperformed or outdid yourself for people but got like the bare minimum back or maybe you felt like you would go into relationships and you would neglect yourself and neglect certain needs or you wouldn't have enough alone time or self-care time there's this feeling of things kind of coming into balance and things that have taken a really long time to get here the temperance is all about patience and um, perseverance in, in ways so I feel like the things that you've been patiently waiting for and maybe have even given up looking for in a way and not put pressure on it. I almost feel like they're going to come back for you now. They're going to come back because you're healing relationship with things from your past that may have been challenging. And it's going to give you a new emotional beginning with the Ace of Cups. It's going to allow you to connect with people from a different place within yourself to attract different kinds of people and relationships. It's going to rewrite your relationship story, your friendship story, your sense of belonging, your emotional story. All those things are being rewritten in a really positive way. Some of you, this could even bring in a romantic partnership if you don't have one. Um, but it's just any kind of relationship where it's like you are feeling more like yourself you are feeling more open-hearted I almost feel like that's part of the problem is that there was something in your past that hurt your heart and then without maybe being fully aware of it you've been a little bit closed off or a little bit afraid or have been attracting people that bring out those triggers or those wounds or those fears or um, that don't trigger those things so that you don't have to fully open up and address them. Either way, it's like you're finally um, neutralizing the energy around the past so that you can actually just attract people from a pure place, from a mirrored place and not um, a place of needing to work through stuff. And I think there's always going to be some element of of working through stuff with people but there are just some relationships that are supportive that are easy that flow that connect with us soul to soul and there's not all this stuff that we have to work through and I really feel like that's what's coming up here is you guys are finally coming to a place where relationships are coming from a new angle where it's again like you don't have to um you don't have to like um work through baggage before to get to the good stuff it's like it's just and it doesn't come up like you're kind of waiting for the shoe to drop but it doesn't come up it's just good it's just easy it's just fun um i pulled this reconsider card which is interesting i do think that some of you guys could have um past relationships come back and they are actually renewed um so there is a lot around the past so i think that there's something here where it's like you're looking at old relationships through new eyes and because you are a new person, you're able to connect with that person in a healthier way. Even if it's not like you getting back with an ex, but it's like, like let's say with a family member you don't have good relationships with. Well, maybe you 
reconsider your relationship with them and decide that, hey, I feel really secure and I don't have the same expectations of them. I feel really solid in myself, really independent. And I would like to still have some kind of relationship with them, but it's coming from a different place. And it's not, again, the expectations are lower and I'm feeling different. So it doesn't create this strain or this forced energy of like, why aren't you doing this for me? Why aren't you meeting my needs? Why are you this way? It's like, we're just able to come back together with somebody in our life and let it be the way it is. Let it be at peace because we are at peace with ourselves because of the way that we've healed our past. I also see big happy changes. So that's really, really positive. I love this along with the Ace of Cups. It feels like, again, a lot of um, the, the potential for just really amazing, fulfilling relationships here. Things that truly fill up your cup, align with you on a spiritual and a soul level and give everything that you've ever wanted uh, to these this these connections um or you're getting everything you've ever wanted in terms of connections and relationships so i really really love to see that so that's what i'm seeing for you cancer don't forget i am changing my brand name to cosmic clarity astrology so make sure that you subscribe to my email below so that you can get all my videos not miss anything on youtube and don't forget to search me under that name now can't wait to see you next week and i hope you have a beautiful one bye